How can there be a meeting between the two? A meeting for which we have been yearning life after life. That kind of experience which we have been trying for. The soul meeting the Supreme Soul. There is no other meeting like that. It gives a very unique experience. And Baba says that is possible, as you know by experience also, that is surely possible. It is possible through loveful remembrance. Through our obedience, through our sense of self-surrender, through our purity, there are certain things which we fulfill. When you try to obtain a visa for another country, there are certain conditions you are required to fulfill. If you fulfill those conditions, then you are given the permission to visit that country. If someone is suffering from some dangerous disease, which is likely to spread if this person is allowed to enter this country, then his application for visa would be rejected because he is a risk to the people. So also, if we have negativities, our past vicious and scarred with us, which is a communicable disease, infectious disease. Because when we have vices, they do not keep confined only to ourselves. We definitely pass it on to others. There is never any example you will find. Any person who has negative sanskaras only by himself, without influencing others. One has to communicate with others, to speak to others, to live with others, to work with others. And in this process, one passes all those germs germs of sex, lust, anger and greed and all that. They are germs in a particular sense. And there is no other medicine to kill them, no other remedy to get escape from them, but meditation, yoga. Yoga is the only solution, only detergent, which washes the soul of all these impurities. And therefore, in today's Murli also Baba said, all of you have to remember, even I am not an exception. Baba said, so far as remembering Shri Baba is concerned, I also have to do the same thing, as you are called upon to do it. Though I sit by the side of Shiv Baba, I am aware that he is with me, I am his instrument, I am the first to listen to his words. But so far as Yad is concerned, remembrance is concerned, I also have to do it. And in spite of my best efforts, I also sometimes forget it. A Brahma Baba who during his corporeal form was the best of the whole lot, 
the most brilliant student of Shiv Baba, who was perfectly obeying him, if he says that he also forgets it, then you might, might perhaps take advantage of it. You would say, then where are we as compared to him? We are a, liable to forget much more, isn't it? But that is a dangerous assumption, conclusion. It, Baba says, I have so many other things to do. Because the engine in the train has to bear the whole resistance of the air when the train is running on the rails. It is the first to confront any obstacle whatsoever. Baba is like an engine. All the difficulties that have been arising that we know from the history of the institution, it is Baba who bore the brunt of it. He confronted all of them. So, there is no comparison. Moreover, he says, you are grandchildren. Grandchildren are loved more by the grandfather than his son. Shri Baba no doubt loves me, but he loves you many times more because you are small kids, tiny tots, little angels. He therefore gives you the best of love. So you are very lucky in that respect. So there is no denying the fact that we all have to remember. But why is it that Baba says that we have to become Nirantar Yogi? We have to have constant yoga. Then it is a fact of life that we forget. Because we have two abilities. One is the ability to remember. The other is the ability to forget. No one learns this in any school or college. They are inborn faculties, abilities. They are a boon as well as a curse. They are boon if we remember Shiv Baba, if we remember our goal, our ideal, what our original stage was, then this remembrance is a boon. If we remember our past negativities and how someone misbehaved with us, insulted us, did try to harm us, then that remembrance becomes the cause of pain, of sorrow. So it is like a double-edged sword. You can use it either way. Same is the case with forgetfulness. There are certain things which you must forget. They say forgive and forget. If you can't forgive and forget, you can't be a yogi. Everyone has the ability to forget. But if we forget the essential things, we go to the airport, forget our passport at our home, you see, then what will be the result? So there are certain things you must remember. If someone asks you your name and you begin to think at that mo moment what my name is. You are mama, your mother calls you Lalu, you see. And father calls you Papu, you see. Your uncle calls you by a different name. They say, Ismaya ke teen naam, parsu parsa parsa ram. You see, when a, one is a small baby, they say Parsu is Rao, Parsu. The real name is Parsaram, but since he is a very small chap, out of love they say Parsu, short name. When he goes to the school and college, he says, Mother, don't say like that. What will the other students think of me? They will also begin to call me Parsu, Parsu. Why you say Parsu? 
at least say parsa so she she begins to say parsa but when he grows further he becomes a great man a good businessman and so on they say parsa ram see even lala parsa ram you see so his titles go on increasing so never do we forget our name so much pakka is the memory of it that when we are sleeping if we are in deep sleep someone says jagdish bhai oh i got up i think someone calling me even in sleep i remember my name so that the very call of this name wakes me up so we have the ability to remember but when to forget and want to remember or what to forget and what to remember is the art of life it can make you a yogi or a bhogi what you remember what is the subject of your remembrance so baba says you must become constant yogi and on the other hand he says that we very often forget even i forget there seems to be a contradiction how can we reconcile these two facts to be a constant yogi not forgetting and still baba saying that you forget aata bhi gundo aur hello bhi nahi how is it possible to do both things at the same time you see is that possible can we become nirantar yogi yes we can if we can't be nirantar yogi why should he ask us to do it he is not asking us to put the himalayas on the fire or the thames on fire because you can't do it he is asking to do you only possible things which are within the range of possibility there are sisters and brothers who do it who have done it near about done it or right, i say like that how is it possible the thing is there are many stages of yoga as you all know by now by experience and from murlis from the experience of other sisters and brothers one is the karma ki stage when you totally obliterate you totally forget about the body you are as an incorporeal soul light and might very brilliant radiating strong vibrations of light and might this is what i am who i am a soul a powerful soul child of the almighty and then at that point of time i remember shiv baba shining light pure light influencing me which is the source of bliss and peace and light and might so i am bathing i am having a shower of that light and might now that is the stage in which there is no interference no intruder no thought or no person comes in between me and my beloved father we two are there there is neither any thought nor any other kind of remembrance no wish no desire i am fulfilled i feel that the battery is being charged oh it is such a wonderful such a tremendous experience seed state our karma ki state now you can't be constantly in that stage of course when baba says you can't be constantly in that yoga you forget it sometimes or often depending upon how serious you are about your pushup 
it is about this stage. If you can't be in this stage all the time, it is very powerful. Baba says if we are in that stage, say even for a year, constantly, we will give up this body. We will become perfect. Then the soul cannot remain in this imperfect body. It will fly. So, to remain in that stage constantly, at least now, in our present state of mind, present state of efforts, is not possible. We can't be Narantar Yogi or constant Yogi from that point of view. But there are many stages of Yoga. One of them, Baba has been very often calling as Avyakta stage. Avyakta stage. Angelic stage. Which too is a self-luminous stage. We have very little, very little consciousness of body if we at all have. The remembrance of the consciousness of the body is not 100% eliminated, but it is just minimum, minimal, you can say. And much of the time, we are happy. No negative thought crossing our mind, remembering that we are souls. And being very happy with our future, with our present, and all what we are getting from Shiva Baba. Now this angelic stage is possible. Baba says you must become Nirantar Yogi from this point of view. Don't come lower than this. Try to maintain your remembrance in such a way that you are in Avyakta stage. For a long time you have now been practicing. So the grass kind of consciousness of the body of flesh and bones should no longer be there. You should get rid of it. Go above it. Again and again you have been practicing traffic control and meditation. You should be able to attain this result. And even if you are aware of the body, you are aware of the self-luminous body, angelic body. Baba says, okay, if you are body conscious, if at all, as you have been during the last 63 lives, you have formed a very strong habit of not forgetting body. Okay, I allow you to remember body but not this grass body, angelic body. Every one of us has an aura, a sheath of light surrounding us. Very often when an artist paints the picture of a saint, he shows light around the head or around the whole body. There is an encasing of light surrounding the whole body. So you should remember that body, even if you are habituated to remember the body. If you can't be without it. That is the angelic stage. And when you look at others, previously when you looked at others, you at that time were conscious of their grass physical form, their ethnicity, their nationality, their language and so on. You are aware of much more all these things. Now you should see there also their body of light. If you can't remember that they are souls, that you are also souls, Again and again the body comes before you. Let that body of light come before you. You should now be able to be in that state constantly. So when he asks us to become a constant yogi, 
it is from that point of view and this kind of practice will enable us ultimately to jump they say there is quantum jump to jump to the highest that karma ti stage karma ti stage will be possible and easy only when we are first able to attain this stage for longer durations of day, our time so this is what we should practice practice you are talking to somebody again you remember of his grass body try to forget it look at it that he is a made up of light and see that there is light around you you are surrounded by light on all the sides when you get up from here go to this side or the other side you just try with a body of light and marching going when you eat think you are a body of light you have a body of light everything made up of light then we can be near that state light will remember remind us of our final nature original nature which is of light we are beings of light as a matter of fact so this kind of practice we should do how to do this practice how to make it possible we understand the explanation what we mean by this you can just imagine you can have the glimpse of it what it means but how to have it that is another question which we will discuss some other time